I would like to in introduce uh, Jerry, uh, who is uh, a business intelligence and product management uh, professional uh, from the Panasonic Industrial Devices Company. And uh, Jerry is heading some very important use cases uh, in the manufacturing and, and supply chain of uh, some key industrial devices. And he will be uh, sharing with us uh, his uh, experience, his battle scars, his challenges from the field uh, today. So over to you, Jerry. Thank you. So this is uh, Jerry, Jerry Dan. Good to see you guys on the uh, through the remote channel. Um, I'm leading a data team that handles the data and analytic activities for one of nine Panasonic divisions in the in the U.S. Um, this division is focusing on the B2B space, so mostly industrial, um, and uh, specifically we're selling electronic component products such as capacitors, sensors, and uh, maybe uh, relays or battery modules to other manufacturing companies. So our data team is fairly small, uh, less than 10 persons strong, and we partner oftentimes with external or internal consultant resources to fill in gaps in our capability. Uh, and one of the projects that we, I'm going to showcase, uh, we partner with automatic team to, um, to fill in the, the solution. So for the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'll be talking about internal data solutions, um, a, a internal data solution that we developed and uh, highlight some of the key learnings and takeaways from this experience. Um, from this, um, from this solution, we're using a curated set of business data, and we're able to provide recommendation to the business uh, in terms of what products should be profitable, profitable, should be added to our portfolio as a new product to maximize the ROI. I hope you'll be finding this useful. Um, just a heads up, I'll be focusing more on the business side and maybe less on the technical side. So this might be very different from the uh, recent sessions that you have observed so far. So going to the next slide. So I noticed maybe there's some formatting issue on the PowerPoint, so hopefully it doesn't skew things too much. So um, for, through the next few slides, I'll talk about the business background, uh, also talk about the main components of our solution, and uh, and then highlight some of the key le lessons and, and interesting points we have observed. And lastly, I'll explain about what kind of technologies we use and uh, open for Q&A after that. Okay, so first about uh, about the business backdrop. So as I mentioned, we are operating in the B2B space. So we are serving other corporations in the electronic components uh, industry. And this business can be character characterized as very um, diverse. So first, we have very wide portfolio of products covering uh, hundreds of thousands of skills uh, within our own portfolio. And this is more than 10 general technology categories. And I'm showing one of them in the uh, as an example, the connector uh, 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 technology. And um, so within just the connector technology, we we can see there are more than two, 20 subcategories, more than 200 competitors, and more than 3 million skills from the uh, various suppliers in the space. And then similarly on the uh, other two Cs, the customer side and competitor side, we have lots of com customers as well. So of course, you have the typical strategic customers, but we're also promoting and selling to the long tail market. So more than 100,000 companies, big or small in the US, um, US uh, market. And in terms of competition, as I mentioned, even just in one competitor uh, con uh, connector category, we are seeing more than 200 competitors. So it's a very competitive, very diverse uh, market space. And all that means that we really have to emphasize automation and data to help us promote and succeed in this market. So, um, so, and also other other things that are important is the being holistic in terms of the data. So we have to uh, gather internal data and external data data to make sure that we have a comprehensive view of the business and make sure that we don't miss opportunities. And lastly, with AI and machine learning, we can be forward looking in terms of insights so that we can guide the business and stay ahead of the competition. Going to the next slide. So a little bit more about the solution. So this topic, this particular solution is focusing on new product recommendation. So our goal is to uh, look at the data available to us through internal and ex external sources and look at the market trend and, and then predict where the market is going. And based on that, recommend uh, what should be our fa uh, um, uh, factories building and developing for the next set of products. So there are three pillars, three key uh, facets that we, we wanted to focus. Number one is to um, 
uh, is to not replace the human uh, uh, element, but re rather use AI, use machine to augment, to support the human uh, uh, component. So we believe that uh, it's, it's never possible for AI to fully replace human because there's so much domain knowledge, so much business domain knowledge in this space. So, um, so we want to emphasize that and, and maintain that good knowledge uh, from the human side and just and keep that accountability, the ownership of the decision at the human side. And to this end, so we design with uh, in the, our solution design, we make sure we put all the relevant information at the hands of the business experts in a very convenient, very uh, comprehensive way, and then make the, their, their decisions easier and more confident. Uh, next, in the second pillar, we want to uh, have the information generated by the AI solution to be very trustworthy worthy for, the, for the decision makers. This means that the information presented must be relevant, must be useful to what the end decision, and it's highly customizable to what each user, each human uh, decision maker wants to see. It also means making the AI process more transparent, more explainable, so that when they need to take the information to their other stakeholders and our other management contacts, they have the ability, the confidence to explain it and have, get the approval to make, uh, to make the decision to go forward. And lastly, we make sure there's a feedback loop so that um, we can get the feedback from the user, users and use the information to retrain to improve the model uh, over time. And lastly, in the third pillar, we want the information to be um, predictive, forward-looking, uh, obviously, and then to provide more insights, new insights that are never before possible to these uh, human users. So this information needs to be provided in a very timely fashion, uh, so very iterative, very um, ad hoc uh, basis and also it allows iterative improvements over time so that we can uh, we can handle the demands from today and also in the future from the uh, business users so it's um here we have some examples of the um of the uh, actual solution component or some uh, summary of the solution components and there are th mainly four steps so first is the um, getting gathering input from the business domain user. So here the user will be using a web-based UI. They'll be uh, focusing on a particular particular product category that, that, that they want to decide the uh, product solution on. And then they will pick a list of important product attributes, product specifications that are available from our raw data. And from here, they will make a, a few other selections and then that will help define the, uh, the scale, the scope of the machine uh, prediction, machine re recommendation model. For example, let's imagine, so take a, uh, use an example that's different from our, from our industry, but maybe more close to home to you. Let's imagine you are owning a, uh, your manufacturer of a digital camera business. And you may want to look at, in that case, you may want to look at the uh, camera, uh, the physical size, the image re resolution of the camera, the sensor size, so how clear, how, um, how uh, strong is the image. And then you may want to take a, uh, take a look at the focus speed of the of the shutters and maybe a, a few other specs that are in, important as you want to make the decision what camera what's the next model to build in your portfolio and then uh, so that's the example uh, to draw parallel to what we do in this process and this would help you the user to allocate your engineering resource uh, based on uh, to support that product development so in the step two of the process, we'll be looking at the uh, solution selection from step one from the human user and run the backend uh, AI engine to organize the available internal and external data and then run predictions on each single combination of the product attributes. So these are attributes provided from step one from the human user. And from the from each of the data points, we'll be predicting the future sales potential and then generate the whole package, the recommendation package back to the business, use, business user and um, Showing, showing what kind of new products that would be most profitable most uh, with the most sales potential to those business users. Moving on to the step three, the business user will be reviewing this set of data, this package, and then collaborate with other decision makers, other stakeholders to move toward a consensus on what's the next product to, to build in terms of new, a new product portfolio. And this is where they will bring in their human uh, expertise, the, the domain knowledge, to fill in the gaps where the AI engine is simply incapable of uh, uh, providing. And in the final step, step four, this is where the, uh, the human decision have been made and that information is fed back into the loop, into the uh, AI process. And this feedback will be used for the AI engine to uh, fine tune itself and then improve the accuracy, improve the quality of recommendation in the next cycle. So that's the four step, uh, four core steps of the solution. 
So just to give you some visual examples, now due to confidentiality, I can share, I cannot share too much detail, uh, but I want to highlight some of the visual examples to, to give you a sense of the human uh, user experience. So on the left side, we're showing the uh, what the user selection looks like when the user starts to get into the process. Uh, in here, they will be defining, they'll be uh, entering a, a selection of product attributes, a selection of the filters or the uh, parameters of each attribute. So how wide, how extensive it needs to be. And we use this information to narrow or define the, uh, the problem scope. And then, uh, and then they would limit the number of features, the product features that we need to uh, iterate through and predict. Uh, and, and that will ultimately make the whole prediction process shorter and more uh, timely. And then, um, and we also at the same time use the caching approach so that whenever the, the similar predictions were done for one user in the past, we'll use a similar output for the next user if they happen to have a very similar selection, very similar product uh, selection. And uh, the end goal here is really to promote that on-demand self-service for the business user so that they can do very quick iterative adjustments in their uh, selection process and they don't have to go a step back and wait for a data scientist, a technical person to to participate in the process. Now, for most of the uh, practical requests, it, the whole process takes about uh, between zero minutes to 20 minutes. So zero is in the case of caching uh, uh, scenario. Now on the right side is the output of the model or, or output of the process. In here, we'll see uh, a detailed uh, listing of the product attributes for each of the new product being recommended, uh, being suggested to the, to the user. Uh, this could include the uh, specifications, the predicted performance of the product in terms of market share, uh, sale price, uh, quantity, or uh, generally the revenue information. And there's also a feedback option where the user can uh, can can input to the process to say uh, this product was deemed useful to the business and they, they decided to invest into that new product uh, development uh, uh, and, and use that as a feedback uh, information back to the process. So the other um, relevant information included here would be the list of competition. Uh, that are already building similar or same products in the market today. So it shows a level of competitiveness and market share potential for that new product recommendation. We also try to show the uh, existing products from our own portfolio that's closest to this recommendation. So we don't build it today, but this is the next product that we already built and we can show uh, how what's the similar similarity and whether it makes sense to jump over to the, this new specification, specification or not. Um, and lastly, we also added visuals uh, into the presentation, into the package, so that the user can very intuitively understand what is the uh, relative potential between each of the rec recommended products. So we'll show the potential uh, return, potential revenue, comparing each of the rec uh, recommended product, uh, overlay on a, the key specifications, the key, um, the key spec uh, attributes. We also project or show, visualize the projected sales over time between the historical data and the future data to show them the trending of each of the products and whether it's trending up, what, down, what to show the attractiveness, attractiveness of the recommendation. So um, the, the whole, whole point of, of this uh, presentation package is number one, it makes it very easy for the user to make that decision because we, present, we, we, we already present and include all of the relevant data points here for them to make that the business decision. The second focus is um, expose as much information from the process as possible so that they can have a, have a little bit more um, transparency, uh, more explain explainability uh, into the AI process. So from our own experience with AI projects in the past, the biggest um, challenge really is the explainab explainability of the black box AI, mo AI models. So when we cannot explain what's going on, going on inside an AI model in a business logical terms, uh, chances are the business user will turn turn away and, and avoid to make that risky decision. So just to summarize some of the interesting learning points we have observed um, up to this, uh, from my experience, uh, up leading to this solution and including this solution. So first learning point is, is that um, we, we use a lot of web scraping to build um, uh, unpre unprecedented uh, new data that's that's not possible internally. And so by combining the web screen data and other techniques, we can start to build relevant market information that's really um, necessary to feed the AI model. And this information needs to be very uh, maintained uh, consistently over time. So it needs to be good qu data quality and, and the time period needs to be sufficiently long so that we can build a prediction on top of it. 
The second point is we needed to build a uh, history, a foundation of success of, of our uh, ROIs over time. And this is usually through the traditional applications like BI reporting and so on before diving into the more advanced use case such as ML and AI. So the, 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 the goal of this is really building up that user trust into the data so that they can start to leverage the data to build quick success, uh, quick wins, and, and then eventually uh, leading to the next point. Then we can scale up the data into more advanced analytics using AI and ML. And this is where we can uh, we can uh, le leverage the advanced techniques to build much larger ROI with a little bit higher risk and investment as well. So the second point leads to the uh, business user support and confidence into the uh, into the third point here. And in the third point, this is where we also try to upskill the business users by introducing the AI uh, concepts to them, the data concepts to them, and build, bring them along the, 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 the journey, the, 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 the data journey. So the last point is um, when we are able to finally deploy the AI models, we really want to emphasize the trust, the trust, trustworthiness, the, the transparency of these process and of these models. So if there's any doubt from the business user about the output of the AI models, then really they will be uh, very likely to turn away and not use the solution, despite the investment that we put into the solution. So that's, um, I think it's a human nature that we, we uh, intentionally try to avoid risk if we don't understand something. So very quickly, I wanna summarize the technologies we use uh, to build up to this solution. So in terms of the data input, we use web scraping and uh, web scraping. And in this process, we use some third party service to maintain that operation, maintain that the data quality. Uh, we also use several uh, listed data AI models here for the AI and machine learning uh, uh, recommendation and predicting predict, predicted process. Uh, in terms of the user element, uh, UI element, we use um, uh, React and Django and so on um, to to present to the users. And these are internal users, so we don't really have to have very fancy or pretty interface. Uh, so that's fairly uh, straightforward. And lastly, in terms of the backend in infrastructure, we use some of the cloud vendors like A AWS, Azure, and then Databricks on Azure to run some of the recommendation and, and, uh, and AI processing as well as web scraping. So that is, let me see, I think that's the last slide of my presentation. So at this point, I'm going to open up and see if there's any question from the audience. Hey, thank you, Jerry. Can you hear us? Yes, can yes, you I hear can. As well, right. Um, so uh, we have time for um, uh, for two questions. Um, uh, actually, uh, two questions in addition to something that I would like to ask right now. Uh, which is, um, so your use case uh, concerns uh, predictions on a lot of um, atypical long tail uh, data cases, right? So um, can you can you clarify a little bit more on what domain expertise uh, is needed uh, at the beginning of developing the system to make sure that you, you have some sensible output coming out of such rare cases? Uh, yeah, definitely. So uh, in terms of our industry, there's a lot of uh, technical um, product attributes. Like imagine if you look at a, uh, say a battery module, you have the voltage uh, capability, you have the uh, current stability. So that there's a lots of nuances, nuances in terms of the data. And this is where the machine may see the data as a simple ones and zeros. But behind the scenes, the, the, the engineers within our company, they will have the business domain knowledge to understand if is this uh, specific specification range is feasible or not. Can we actually develop this uh, with a reasonable cost, with a reasonable time frame or not? So those are the additional attributes that the user, the business people would have the domain knowledge to help, um, to help either limit the scope of the AI or give some direction and guidance. So it's it, the AI, the, the prediction model can be focusing on where we can realistically support and, and handle in the business world. So that's one example what, of the- uh, Which departments in the company do these experts come from? And, and what, what knowledge uh, is needed from them? Yep, so it's typically our product, man uh, product management and also uh, R&D departments that has this domain knowledge. So um, we talked about more than 10 product categories in our portfolio. So when we build this process, when we build this models, it's, cut, it's uh, tuned to each product category. So when we build the model each time for each product category, we'll be interviewing, we'll be uh, working with those business domain experts on that category to, to, uh, to modify and fine tune the model in advance. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, would like to ask a question in your product. Uh, 
actually the the the, the, the production team can leverage anything from the recommendation and the prediction. Now, sorry, I missed the last part of the question. So the production team can the leverage question? anything. Can leverage it anything from the recommendation and prediction now, anything they can leverage yep so yeah. the output of the model is basically uh, what kind of uh, new products that are recommended to the uh, to the r d and manufacturing team so this is down to the skill level you know down to the very detailed attribute product attribute level so based on the, the output the r d team will look at those attributes those uh, combination of attributes and see if it's realistic or feasible for them to build their product uh, in the next go around in the next business cycle so that's the way they will leverage the information. So if you think about the real world challenge, oftentimes we can talk to um, strategic customers to learn about what they want to see and use in the next cycle, but that's very limited set of um, companies. We're not able to have that similar conversation with hundreds of thousands of companies all at the same time. So we're using data, using this automated or semi-automated process, we can scale and increase that conversation and that knowledge into the whole market, into the whole portfolio. So that's the main, um, benefit of this process to the R&D world. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, we are at time, and uh, thanks for spending the time preparing these uh, insights uh, from the field for us. Thank you.